Unfortunately, this week, some Christians were upset with Sam Smith's performance at the Brit Award because apparently they think the devil should only be portrayed by in-shape men. But we want to say thank you to Sam for showing Hollywood and Christians that playing the devil isn't just for in-shape people anymore. It's also for fat, gross men. Fat, gross dudes can dress up like the devil just as good as normal ones. Yeah, you don't have to run on a treadmill in order to run hell. Or play on the New Jersey Devils. You know, Sam Smith is showing that kid ripping around a Walmart in his mobility scooter that he too could be a fat, gross slob playing the devil rolling around on a stage. Oh, man. If anything, that kid should be eating more to prepare. And also my friend Gord, who's upwards of four bills and wanted to dress as the devil for Halloween, but didn't because he thought the costume looked gross. Well, this is your time, Gord. And to dress like the devil, you shouldn't have to hold back on that 19th deviled egg before deviling over from exhaustion. White male Lizzo should be applauded for making men like us horny with those horns. And that's actually not gay if you checked, because technically he's not a dude. Thank you, Sam Smith, for devouring and then sh out that harmful stereotype that all gay men have to be in shape and punishing that toilet's porcelain with a reality check. Being a fat celebrity is not just for women anymore, and I'm personally retiring these horns in hopes that someone of my moderate size never dresses up like the devil ever again. Yeah, you know what? Me too! I think that you're probably good on that no, front. No, thin guys like us. Uh, We're yeah, getting I'm rid doing of the this horn. for you! The boys! It's the boys' cast! The lads! It's the boys' cast! The dudes! Boys cast, you already know what it is. We here, we're queer, haven't slept Whoa. again, so I'm sort of been doing that. Yeah, the no sleep. Yeah, I've been on the no You're sleep. Already, thing. But, but, but it's, it's just grind set. It's he, Goggins. It's Goggins no sleep. Well, this is actually what's happening. Every time I go to sleep and I lie there, so I went to sleep at eight the other day and I literally lie there and then basically, you know, when you're about to fall asleep, yeah, my mind kicks it out of it. It's like literally, it's like I'll almost fall asleep, then it goes, get out of there. Really? You know, it's, it sort of sees the sleep coming. You it need goes, to go nah, to you got like, the wrong fucking guy. You know what I bet? Yo, you got the wrong You one. got the wrong dude. It's Goggins yelling. <laughs> at you in your brain you go you little bitch you need to sleep sleep for <laughs> bitches dude it's actually what's happening to me though yo i fucking lie there and it's like i'm i'm i can feel myself dozing off and then i also and then i guess a part of my brain's like not today bro yeah nah, you, know, you know what i bet would help you if you go to like a totally off the grid like no communicate like of no course phone, that would help none of that stuff obviously but like as a reset i'm not saying like this oh. is your, yeah i'm not saying like oh just like get rid of all your go amish i'm saying go amish for like a week yeah i've i've thought of that i actually have thought of that like what if i just went to an island for like a week yeah yeah i know yeah. reset like the whole no thing. phone no computer i wouldn't be able just... to do it though though i would probably i would i would have to, i'd be that guy building a phone yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'd start a phone company. Before I knew you'd it, I'd be, have my phone Instagram uh, business on what Oh, I'd... you'd be talking to a fucking volleyball. <laughs> you'd be getting real cagey talking about coconuts. <laughs> Yo, I, and I'd be telling during my comedy show to the volleyball. <laughs> I actually would be. Uh, speaking of comedy shows, uh, uh, I'll be Atlanta next weekend, Philadelphia uh, with Danny, San Diego, yep. Tampa, New York, New Jersey. Danny's going to be in New Jersey next yeah, weekend. Yeah, dog. I'm going to be in New Jersey, uh, Morris Plains, April 22nd. Just came out. back from Saratoga Springs where he said two people fell asleep in yep. the audience. So if you they have passed sleep out from enjoyment, <laughs> these out. chicks would not <laughs> shut the fuck up. And then by the end of it, they were literally like slumped over, like <laughs> sleeping front row. It's the kind of comedy that you're getting out there. You come. Yeah. Whether it's smooth jazz comedy. It is sort of smooth jazz. And situation. it was really hot in there too. They were like it was cook, roasting in there, so they were just like, Pfft. "That's crazy." Yeah. Okay, so if this is a comedy thing. Be first. <laughs> we got to give a shout out to uh, Lou Spears. Yeah. So we uh, basically most people. It was not a weird thing to talk about the Dalai Lama thing. Like, a lot of people talked about that. But the angry Buddhist protests Aussie comedian's show over his joke about the Dalai Lama asking a young boy to suck his tongue, but the comic is not backing down. Yeah. Angry Buddhist seems like a... <laughs> okay, ready? Just like a, a okay, phrase that shouldn't exist. Listen to this. Do you know what they're chanting? Shame, shame. No, they're saying Lewis Spears and then some, something in different languages. Oh. <laughs> Lewis Spears, not funny. Oh. Lewis Spears, <laughs> not funny. <laughs> That's, that is a pretty funny thing to like protest at the show. They go, Lewis.
Britney Spears. Not funny. That sucks too because generally you want like super political people, like you know, from like a uh, one side of the left or right. Oh, it was thing. such a. No he did like a normal joke about how the Dalai Lama is <laughs> sucking the kid's tongue or whatever, and it was weird. It's like how how even if you are a Buddhist, how are you just like yeah, nothing weird about this? Like obviously it's sort of a strange thing. Yeah. But and they go, he's helped us so much that just no, give him a pass. It's honestly incredible. And you're right. It is funny just to have like a hundred Buddhist people outside <laughs> and they're just like the most peaceful just, people. I, if I was Lou, I would just I literally get out there and go, look, cut the shit. One of you needs to just get to it and self immolate already. Light yourself on fire. I know this is where we're gonna end up. Exactly. So let's just do this let's and get, cut to the chase. Get some marshmallows and just roast some marshmallows. He on wanted to uh, go talk to the protesters and the police told him he wasn't allowed to. <laughs> Because so it was, it was a bunch of like, they just weren't that violent, you know what I mean? Yeah. But as 150 dudes, and there's women and children, at the entrance of the rubber chicken comedy pub. <laughs> That's the best, too, is I love how far behind certain countries are for comedy. Like, you can tell that they got comedy later because they have places called the Rubber Chicken Comedy Club. That was actually the best part about it, I think. <laughs> it's so funny being like a Buddhist that you're just like, hey, do you guys think, what do you want to do? You want to do some Buddhist stuff today? It's like, ah, oh, yeah. I can't. We got an event at the Rubber Chicken. We're protesting. Yeah, well, let guys. me tell you what. Lou is going to not be laughing when he comes back, uh, re gets reincarnated as like a bug. <laughs> <laughs> tell you, Lou is going to not be laughing then. Uh, so the rubber chicken part was really funny, but then on top of that, there was uh, you're you're sort of a guy that almost had pro. You had a few protests yeah, back I've in the day. He was a bad boy. I've, I'm a bad boy. I've, I've, riled, I've riled some people. Yeah, you used to have the devil horns. It used to be sort of that's yeah. what you used to start. Now, dude, they, I used to literally end all my sets being like fucking rock on devils. I don't. I don't the audience didn't have a good time, but I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> <laughs> you came here to laugh and you left crying. <laughs> and then now people are sleeping at his show. Yeah, now they're sleeping. So I've, I've gone full circle. <laughs> Don't it fucking, full circle. That would be. I guarantee 2015, Danny. If he came out and he saw your new shows, he goes, "Oh, they like you know how uh, they you do it like a future in time." They go, yeah. "This guy, he's like take some time potion. We're just gonna put him in ten years." He goes, "I can't wait to see how good Danny's gotten a comedy." He must, I'm a bad boy now, <laughs> but he must be really bad boy. And he's like waiting at the door, talking to the other time travelers. He's like, "What you got the leather jacket? You think I got on?" <laughs> then he walks in. People are snoring. <laughs> I'm just be like, "Hey, everybody, wake up." Wake up! <laughs> you're, Wake walk, up. you're walking through the crowd, pouring water on people, fucking <laughs> the new Danny, but no one can see you. So just water on the thing. You go, I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad boy. <laughs> what the fuck is this shit, new Danny? Yeah, you know, old Danny wouldn't like that, but they go. But pe the pedophile jokes fell flat for some of the Buddhist demonstrators. Oh, did they? <laughs> Some of the demonstrators who arrived at the pub at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. So how many how many shows do you think you'll have of P protesters? Like two or three? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Probably it'll end once they realize there's no point. I think they want to just get their message across, which is honestly pretty decent turnout for you to organize 100 people to show up to protest a comedian. 150. Or 150. That's the, pretty good. You, have to, you can't really that's, count all uh, of it, though. A lot of people brought their whole families. That's right. the thing you're forgetting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like Westboro Baptist Church. We go, where do you get these numbers? And go, yeah, we force our family to come. Well, so that's what it was. It, was, it wasn't. It was 150 divided by four. So yeah. was that 40? You can do that math. Thank you. What would you say? Yeah, that's around 40. 38. But yeah, basically they... They, so it's like 40, fa 40 dudes, and then it's like the whole family's coming. And some of those families are bigger, too. Yeah. But uh, that's Many the other soldiers. thing I was thinking, because this weekend I was only doing stand-up, and I sort of went on a uh, what you said, the cleanse of everything, but except for stand-up. And I know people don't love talking about stand-up that much on yeah. the podcast. They're kind of sick of it. Yeah. But the one thing I will say is I was realizing that stand-up's sort of better. And the reason, the reason for it is that, like, it was sort of centered my whole life a little bit. And one of the reasons for that is like, it's actually like sort of a game. You want to play like games in your life that you actually sort of can win at where it's like, okay, you're trying to write these jokes and then you go on the stage and you do it and then you start tweak it and you actually can have like a finished thing. Sure, yeah. Whereas everything else like social media, you ever see that Seinfeld episode where Newman's like the male never stops? Yeah, the male never stops. That's yeah. like everything else I'm doing. It's kind of, or like or like a guy that's just trying to have sex with girls. It's like the, the game never ends. Uh -huh. All you can do and your prize no, for winning the game is more of the it's, game. It's funny you say that because I've been 
been reading this guy who uh, he's like this big like um, life op not life op productivity guy. His name's uh, something Forte. I can't remember, but he has this thing. It's called like the second brain. How to organize all this stuff? And there's like a one. Of, there's these four things, and one of the buckets is the stuff that never ends. Like he's like there's he's like okay. there's basically like there's projects and then there's areas, and he's like projects are a thing that end. So like in my list, I'd be like this is a thing that that will eventually end. But then like if you have something that like never ends, it goes in like the areas. Well, thing. I have only things that never end. Yeah. I was feeling like well, that's why you got to get to yeah, you gotta yeah, yeah you so start that's that you're you right. gotta segment them so you can be like at least these things I can get these wins like these things I can chip off and this has a final end to it and then the areas are like they never end. I'll tell you what, like your health, like your health never ends. That's an area that is like that's literally one of the ones I was thinking about. I was like going to the gym. I was like another thing that it's just never over. Yes, but just I do mean, it forever. Well, yeah, but you I, die literally. But I mean, there is no there is no final to it. All you can do is keep adding like goals. I guess you want to achieve. I guess to that. But like, yeah, I mean, you die. That's it. That's well, the it. It only ends for the day, and then you just have like twenty <laughs> things that end that day. Yeah, I know. Stinks. I'll tell you, definitely fucking didn't end for. So there's a hot topic on the internet right now is uh, with like the plus size women demand more. The so basically your people, my people, yeah, the devil people. Plus size woman demands free seat and bigger bathrooms on airlines in online petition. I mean, I'll sign that petition. Yeah, I want like who doesn't want that? <laughs> like literally, who does not want that? What person is like, you know, you know what? I'm fine with my like really uncomfortable seat where this fucking metal thing is jamming into my knee. I, what I actually said was taller is way more fair if you actually think about it. Yeah. Well, because obviously the main thing is a taller person like actually to some degree can't help that, right? Yeah. Okay. And to all the degrees. All the degrees. In fact. Really, yeah. But the, the if you're like, so this one is... If you're if you're combining for this, how does it not how does it how does it stop at fat is my first thing right? And you also said you had the funniest phrase SMO, which is uh, <laughs> super, super morbidly. Mo yes, yeah, so some, someone, uh, someone I know the posted <laughs> and they were like went on this whole. It was about the movie The Whale, and they didn't like how the whale was being portrayed, and they literally were like as an SMO. And then I was like, what's SMO? And then I went and look it up, and it's the term is super morbidly obese. <laughs> Love it. But it's like, they're like, we're, this is the category. Because this is the type of person, too, who they're like, they don't really fit into any victim category. So they had to, like, kind of, this is the one that they. SMO is tough, dude. Like, <laughs> you're with your chick, you're like, yeah, I'm a bit of an SMO. <laughs> Content creator. So whatever. This girl basically on TikTok made this whole big basic thing because she's too fat to sit in her chair, right? Yep. And sort of become a big debate. But it's like. They go, the couples are both plus size travelers. She described in a flight from Pasco to Denver, on which her fiance was subjected to comments and disapproving looks and even refusal to sit next to them. I mean, it's funny because you have a big debate. You're like, yeah, it's a big debate in one country in the world. <laughs> yeah, huge debate in this one country. There's, it's not a debate in any other country in the world. It's all just so big being like, <laughs> like what do you and like what are you gonna do? So say like, they go, okay, we're gonna extend all the seats, and then like you're gonna end up running into tra like tourists from Asia who go, can we just go two to like can we just buy one seat, yeah, one seat for sit, two of us, yeah, two of us, like very comfortable, or the opposite <laughs> where you go Brendan Fraser whale style, and though though I think what no what they're saying is they should get a free Brendan. seat, right? So you go Brendan Fraser whale where you do like the full fat suit, like we go full Buck and Chuck, yeah, and then you go, I'm here for my second again, seat again. I want a second seat, but that's what I mean, you. If if you just, well, I don't it, need it. I shouldn't say you. In my case, if I was to, you know, you put the padding on yeah. and you do the makeup yeah. and you show up and you legitimately just accept, you go, hey, I'm here if you have to need a whole row. Yeah. You're, honestly, now that you're talking about it, I actually just thought of an invention because you know how all these airlines are being like stiff. Fat suit. No, I no, 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 not fat suit. Hear me out here because you know the airlines char suit. charge you for carry ons. <laughs> yeah. So it's a bag that you wear. So you put all your shit. So it's a fat suit that you, like a fat suit bag that you wear so you save on the on the carry-on charge as well and you get the extra seat that's actually okay yeah, yeah. so you just like you just pack your fat suit with your clothes and all your things and then you're walking around yeah fat suit bad. full of clothes <laughs> yeah yeah we did <laughs> yeah we did <laughs> like why wouldn't you it all boils down to though even when they're talking about all this stuff because they're just like you know what should happen is this and it was like well I guess the question is like how much should you know the government start telling airlines like hey you've got to do this I feel like this is the stuff that happened in like Canada first where they go anyone gets a free seat to be it does really incentivize it though too you go hey you're right on the margin like do you have to go on a scale or are you just sort of an honor system because then you go hey i think that i need two seats like what and they go what are they gonna of say of course and but then what, what they happens say, when 
man. No, I don't think you're big enough. You go, I am. I'm too fat. Yeah. Or what happens when a guy who's like, yeah, I'm uh, offensive <laughs> lineman for a college football team. So I'm like, I don't look like necessarily fat. I'm just yeah. a massive guy. No, what happens is they basically have a guy that stands at the front of the airline, and then they decide who gets two seats, and he sort of as he goes a carnival barker. He goes, <laughs> step right up. And then you go, you go, hey, here it is. And then you step on, he goes, ding, 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 you won a second seat. And he's got like a little cane and he's like, <laughs> he's like inspecting the fat with the cane. Like he's like, you know, like touching and stuff and just like lifting. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a second seat. Oh, that is bad news for the standby page. <laughs> oh, that's going to be bad news for standby. <laughs> and then the sta so they basically if you're on standby, you stand beside the scale. Yeah. And then if the guy if the guy ding 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 and then what happens is they drop the box and the guy shoots back out to the main <laughs> area. So there's like a slide beside the thing. What about if they let those people they go, "Okay, we'll give you extra room, but you got to go in the cargo hold." That, see that they should. If, they go. There's room in the cargo hold. It's a little chilly in there, but because there should be some sort of like you shouldn't be excited. Like some sort of incentive to not be in this section. So it should be in another section that's like a little less comfortable. Yeah. Basically, well, yeah. And again, have, like, you're asking for more room. <laughs> you're asking for more room for the same amount of money. So you're just like, yeah, cargo. Hold. Well, they're saying they basically want to subsidize is the idea, right? Because they're like, oh, the airlines pay for it. It's like, well, that's not how it works. It's basically everyone pays a little bit of it. Yeah, as well for their insurance, their health insurance as well. <laughs> it's also <laughs> being subsidized by everybody else. So. Yeah, exactly. I don't. Yeah, you go, you're, you have enough things subsidized for you. <laughs> I mean, again, I just, they don't live in reality. They go, yeah, this is what I want. And you go, based on okay, what? Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, but you, this is, you might not live in reality, because I honestly think that in some countries, this is common. In a country other than I America? I think some places, you do get a second seat if you're fat. I mean, there are, we've talked about this before, there are airlines, actually, who do, as a policy, if there's a seat available, they will give it to you. If there's a seat available. They will give it to you, but on a sold-out flight, they're just like, Have yeah. Have you ever been in a flight where the two people beside you are really big, and you basically, like, they're almost touching, and you're in the seat? Uh, no, but I've seen you people You feel like, basically, where... the two people are... Actually, yes, uh, when I went to, when we went for Skankfest... Yeah, I was like, the person was literally, it, it was a regular sized dude, normal sized dude, he's probably like you, and the chick was really big, and she was in the middle, he was on the window, and I was in the aisle, so she was like spilling over into my seat. That's what happened. You essentially, well, you're not, you weren't in the middle, though. The middle is where you don't want to be. You no. basically become like a guy that's being, mo you be like a, a small dude that's being motorboated by a girl's <laughs> two huge titties. You're like the guy getting motorboated in the middle. Yeah. I mean, here's a, okay, here's an idea, right? Those people want to have it subsidized. What if you get dudes with fat fetishes right and they, like the you know the skinny dudes with fat fetishes and they pay extra to sit in between the two heifers yes because <laughs> they would right if you go hey like we'll, we'll get you right in between these like real big girls and they'll be all spilling on you see that's and how we win on you and yeah the passenger can pl this is the things that they want they want larger bathrooms seat belt extenders and alternative seating arrangements. So, uh, and then also they said it's not unreasonable to have a uh, a seat or an extra row. So they go all plus size passengers should be provided with an extra free seat or even two or three. What, so demanding you, a row is a lot. What do you think of this for the uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> demanding whole a whole row is pushing it? What do you think for the extra seating uh, options? Is you know like if they ever have to extract like a elephant from like a zoo or something, and then they, they like, pour it they, on the they, bottom. They, yeah. They, yeah, and then it's like <laughs> Operation Dumbo Drop style. They go, here we go. They go, where am I? Uh, where's my seat? And go, just stand on the tarmac. <laughs> a helicopter's gonna come pick you up and fly you away. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but like they do a thing where it's like the world's fattest man and they show the world's fattest man, you know, like how it used to be the carnival position. Yeah. And essentially, from the, the world's fattest man, like back in the day, it was like, it looks like any dude at yeah, Walmart yeah. right now. <laughs> It's like pretty crazy, dude. If you actually look at it, you go, I know 20 people bigger than this guy. Yeah, yeah. It's funny that world's fattest man and world's oldest man is like, you only get to keep that title for like a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Buddy, you got to take a peek at this guy. He looks like... He's uh, from what year? Uh, just go like the old world's fattest man or whatever. But like this dude... It's like if you actually look at him, it's like I know we know twenty comedians that are look a like this. World's fattest man, eighteen ninety. Yeah, eighteen ninety. <laughs> That's the world's fattest man. This guy was like attraction. That guy looks like he looks like Vader or something from wrestling. It looks like a hundred wrestlers. Yeah, it's hundreds of wrestlers. Oh, you, you put a, you put a spandex suit on this guy and throw him in the ring. You wouldn't miss a beat. Yeah, that was before all the processed foods. That's crazy that that dude is the world's fattest man. This.
I guess they didn't have good health care though, so like that's just kind of what health care allowed you to max out at too, right? So you're saying the world's actual fat is man's in his fucking grave. It's, well, this is the um, what's the dude who the the guy who ran the fastest like the four minute mile or whatever? He like you couldn't bre- go faster than that. I can't remember what his name was. No one but thought it's like, that it's possible it's to possible, eat that. Possible, but then they're like, yeah, they didn't have like statins and all these things that keep you alive because uh-huh. they're keeping these people alive to allow them to get fatter. <laughs> yeah. Whereas he didn't, this guy didn't have the advantage. So there's a bit of an asterisk. I'm telling you, I think Candace, they're going to do all the stuff that they requested. Yeah. Have you seen you? Did you like the Canadian 69 stuff? Were you happy with that? Canadian 69? Uh, Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. As I was thinking of a funny sketch of being like your Elon Musk joke writer and you like write all these jokes and he's like, I think we're going 69 again. And you go, all right. I uh, just kind of wrote all this stuff. I just like, he's like how about CBS. we do this? 69. I was like, I was kind of thinking maybe we do like, you know, put black owned business, sort of take a dig at Trudeau. Like there's a lot of funny things we could do. And he's just like, 69 again. Okay. Goes, all right. All right, <laughs> we're all right doing, we're, 69 and 420. Okay. 69 days till 420. That's why I mean, I wrote pages and pages here. What, what are you hiring me for? <laughs> he's just not happy that Elon. <laughs> I just like that he's taking the piss out of can't like just piss, pissing off all the people in uh in Canada. A- the CBCs. We're leaving Twitter. You go, okay. I know, right? You, know, uh, you still have a website. Like we still access your news. Well, the, all, all of them are leaving, but he is—he just like sort of Elon's just like wreaking havoc right now, eh? Yeah, I guess that's you know you spend forty-four billion. You uh, I feel like that was up your alley. I feel like you'd be more excited about that, like the CBC getting. I feel like you're a defund well, the we CBC were guy, sort of. It. Yeah. No, that happened. You were saying it might pro- happen, and then it did happen. Yeah, yeah. The the problem with my because I actually think that the CBC like local stuff is okay. It's the na- it's the national shit that is is the poison. <laughs> That's the poison stuff. That's the poison it's, stuff. It's the national show. So I did a. Um, these are HuffPost did an article. Like, There's a lot of fat stuff this week. Nice. We haven't done it in a while, but there was a HuffPost did a basically an article that was common phrases that are actually fat shaming. Yeah. And basically, it's a list of phrases that you should never say. But the funny part is c- thinking of them in the context of like your girl that's getting fatter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because <laughs> they basically say experts. So there's ex- the experts. This is from experts, Danny. So don't question it. Mm-hmm. Share with these common anti-fat phrases and how you can be a little more mindful of your ang- language. So you're not fat. You're beautiful. That's the first one you shouldn't say. An all-time popular phrase, all-time popular for psychopaths, <laughs> is telling someone that they're beautiful to console them. Because if someone says, oh, I'm looking fat, and you go, no, you're not beautiful, you're fat. You know, those, what do those have to do well, what, what you're supposed to say is, no, you're fat and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> what, how do you think that would go over? Because I'm feeling kind of fat. You go, yeah. No, you go, and what's wrong with that? I don't feel beautiful. I feel fat. You go, correction. Um, you're fat and beautiful. <laughs> no, you're morbidly obese and beautiful. I can't even fit into my pants. You can't fit into your pants and you're pretty. I cannot believe that there is a national association to advance <laughs> fat acceptance. <laughs> it's funny, too. I'm you. on their website right now. They have a thing called Campaign for Size Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> There's a. You know what's funny? The one thing that the National that's Association. You the, that's you had the bathhouse with your campaign for size. Yeah, you know what's funny though? You know what the one thing that the National. Because they have all these like get, get involved, they have all these events. Let me tell you what event I'm going to predict they don't have a march. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Ooh, 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 you're in the fucking scope, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> you go, hey, hey, we're doing a, ma- a march for fat acceptance for the National Association of Fat Acceptance. Huh, nobody showed. I think I'd weird. To, if they'd have to do that, they'd have to do the march of street repair. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> they want to add weight as a protected class. <laughs> We're doing a march of, uh, we're doing the fat march, and then we're also doing the street repair march the next day. <laughs> <laughs> the march of repair, man. Yeah, the other construction worker march the next day. We're just like, they're opposing. Like, you know, they'll have like the Palestine and Israel, and it's like one's on one side. Remember they do that in Toronto, and they're all yelling at each other every year? They'll be like that. It's just like the construction workers and the fat people, and they're just like, go home, you go home. <laughs> <laughs> One fat construction worker is not sure what to do. Yeah, he goes like, ah. like the black cops that were getting yeah, yelled exactly. at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a scab <laughs> fixing the streets. <laughs> oh shit! So they don't want you to say that you're fat. You're beautiful. That's a big one for them. Yeah. So yeah, the, the best is just thinking like you're dating a chick that's like she just put on like a few pounds. You know what I mean? Like oh, I feel fat. It's like and there's nothing wrong with that. She's like you're kind of supposed to say I'm not. It's like but you are and you're beautiful. <laughs> 
I'm having a cheat day. One term that comes from diet culture is cheat day, according to Osborne. A cheat day is the idea that there's a universal right way to eat and you have a special day for bad food. So cheat day, basically if someone has a cheat day, you're, a cheat day every, cheat days every day, JJ's me. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's funny, though. I mean, The Rock, is a, he's a big cheat day Cheat guy. day implies that you can only have one day like this, otherwise you get fat. It's like, <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, it is. <laughs> yes, that's what's happening to all your... It's mem- a really troubling Your entire phase. constituency is has daily cheat days. Which yes. Is- but their idea is that there's nothing wrong with that. Which is it's one thing to be like, it's sort of all over the place, because it really kind of t- t- tools back and forth from being like... Yeah, like there's, uh, you'll get fat if, and there's nothing wrong with that to being like, some people say that if you cheat food every day that you'll get fat, and it's like, you will, and it's like, yeah. there shouldn't be nothing wrong with that, I guess, right? Yeah, this, you're not a protected class, that's insane. It's definitely a protected class, <laughs> protected by gravity. <laughs> <laughs> So fucking dumb. <laughs> they make us do this. Yeah, like we have really no <laughs> we, have, we have better things to talk about out here. Yeah. But it's hard when it becomes the entire Twitter discourse is about <laughs> whether this fat person gets a fucking full plane to themselves. What am I supposed to do? Ignore it? it? Says writer, call your legislators here. What you, what you can do? So write, sign the petition and then call your legislator. What's the call petition? Chuck Schumer. I demand can you justice for the fat Send me another people. petition. I. <laughs> Cause I uh I gotta grind. Stop making these petitions so delicious. Chuck and Bucks on the petition. <laughs> that literally is. You're just like, what are you talking about, boys? And then they say, You've lost weight, you look great, so don't tell anyone that. Yeah. Say that you looked equally as good. I mean the only thing I will say don't is, tell the girl is there is a thing. Where people who lose weight look worse in the face. Well, it's but, your, yeah, that's a separate thing. You're saying that some sure. people, there's so a certain like, type of people that they just look a fucking deathly. Yeah, they look deathly, but they are uh, much healthier. You know who that's the most with? Old people. Yeah. Like old people with a little meat on their bones look a little better well, than it's when like, they it's start like, to get fucked. Because they have no fill- muscle, right? Well, but it's also like filler for it's your filler, face. It's filler. Right? <laughs> like, you know that guy Hard Rock Nick? No, I don't know. Hard Rock Nick, is that one of your male porn stars? No, he's like like? this weird looking dude on uh, Instagram or whatever that he's like somewhat popular. Anyways, he lost a lot of weight and he's like looks way worse. Okay. His face looks so weird. (laughs) I have I have seen a few people in my life that I'll tell you what they definitely look is older. Yeah, yeah. It ages you because you're yeah you're like gets shallow and like yeah. But that's not what they're saying. They're saying just even if they do look better, you shouldn't tell them that. And then beyond this, many people who lose weight eventually gain it back. It's like, well, that's the equivalent of being like someone's got a new job. It's like, I don't want to say congratulations because there's a chance (laughs) to get fired. You're like, what? It's like, yeah, someone's like working out and they look better. It's like, well... Someone comes out and like, how do I look? And they go, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. (laughs) (laughs) Not so fast. Um... Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, it may be worth a comment, but I mean, I don't have to take that compliment back, so I'm just not going to give it in the first place. <laughs> I'll congratulate you at your funeral. How does that sound? <laughs> Let's like, come back to me in two months. We'll fucking talk, pal. <laughs> this is a sh- this looks like a short term weight loss. So I don't get Aww. too low. don't get too comfortable there getting compliments. <laughs> just want to say before you get these compliments distributed, I don't want you getting too enjoying this because. And then the last thing, oh, uh, yeah, there they go. I'm I'm gonna be bad, so I'll have this cookie. That's one. Yeah. And you go, well, that's, there's nothing bad about it. Yeah, what's bad about eating uh, box Oreos? <laughs> and, I, like, I mean, also, let's be honest. Like, I'm gonna be, do you ever say that, though? You probably say that, for sure. I don't fucking, I mean, how many times do you say that to your chick? You go, let's be fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's that's woman talk right there, because my girlfriend does say that. She <laughs> orders cupcakes, and she goes, I'm I'm, I'm going to be bad. Well, you're supposed to correct her and be like, I don't no, see anything bad I, I about said, that. Yeah, there's nothing bad about that. You're fat and you're beautiful. <laughs> Do you ever... <laughs> you know, you're saying you don't come in the bedroom, though. You're just like... And then, like... Danny's been a bad boy. <laughs> I feel like you do that. <laughs> oh, I got some in my teeth, and it's like the the the, the cupcake wrapper, like the whole thing. Oh, you're bad. No, you're fucking bad. You're fucking naughty. Danny's been <laughs> naughty. <laughs> That's what it is. It's your neighbors like hearing you guys in the other room, like, oh, you're so fucking bad. Yeah, yeah, fucking. And they come in, it's just you with like twelve donuts, like you and you and your chick just covering fucking donut stuff. Yeah, you're fucking a bad you're girl. You're a fucking bad boy. Yeah. You tell me how bad I am. <laughs> it's just the whipped cream. <laughs> yeah, whipping the whipped cream on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Every, everyone thinks that you're fucking. <laughs> Can you guys stop freaks. having sex over there? Yeah, sex. We the haven't fuck? had sex in 14 years. <laughs> so that's you guys. Yep. Also, they so say it's racist too. There's a part of it where they go. Also, uh, we're we're not thinking of how the ways uh, this all this food stuff comes from racist uh, positions. So and the racist ideology behind anti-fat. Yeah. That's, that's a fucking judo move Racist though right now. Racist ideology behind anti-fat. Yeah, so that's a judo move is what we call that, that in the business. Is, that's a word jumble right there. And that's... also saying people have small dicks is Asian. <laughs> it's racist. Uh, yeah. Islamophobic. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm going to take a quick second here to tell you about one of our favorite sponsors, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. But it's actually only one Sunday. So if you, someone like Danny might have been confused there for a second. Mm -hmm. But listen, it's starting to warm up. There's nothing I love more than the summer. Yeah. Coming at you. Loving it. New York's starting to pop off. We're walking around in t-shirts. Maybe it got a little colder today. But you want to get outside. You're digging in your garden. One of everyone's favorite parts of spring. And Sunday makes lawn care easier than ever to enjoy. If you're like me, you love spring. But you may not love figuring out how to take care of your yard. Does anyone out there just stand in the store wondering where to start? That's where Sunday Lawn Care comes in, solves the problem for you. You're not some doofus looking at, you're not some bug man doofus looking at, oh, excuse, excuse me, sir. <laughs> oh, talking to people walking by, excuse me, ma'am, uh, could you help me? You're like a little wiener. Mm -hmm. That's what Sunday stops. Wiener. Now that spring's finally here, the days are longer, the flowers are blooming, and I can spend time outside in the yard. What makes the season even better is Sunday Lawn Care. It's time to reclaim your weekend. Sunday Lawn Care is one thing that you can take off your to-do list. Instead of spending time working on your yard, Sunday can help you spend time enjoying it. It's everything you need to get the lawn you dreamed of. This spring, you go to GetSunday.com slash BoysCast. You just enter your address to get a customized plan created for just your lawn. No trips to the store. You're not hauling heavy bags, throwing them in your hoopty. They ship straight to your home. You don't... All you need is a hose to apply Sunday, and you can fertilize your whole lawn in less time than it takes to watch an episode of your favorite TV show, which I assume is Girls. Yes. And they only use ingredients you can feel good about. There's no harsh chemicals, no waiting long periods, or trying to keep your kids or pet off the lawn. Simply apply, let it dry, and you're back to enjoying your yard. Sunday's easy and affordable, and some lawn care services cost more than $1,500 a year. But Sunday's full season plans start at just 109 bones. Sunday's offering the Boys Cast listeners 20% off. Full season plans start at just $109, and you get 20% off when you visit GetSunday.com slash BoysCast at checkout. That's 20% off your custom plan at GetSunday.com slash BoysCast. And you know, we also got to tell you about Athletic Greens. And you know that I take Athletic Greens every single day. And this is not just me. This is some other people on the podcast I who I will lay, remain unnamed. Mm -hmm. But if you really? had... It, it rhymes with Branny. Brandy. Rhymes with Brandy. Brandy. Athletic Greens every single day. Me and Danny just got our re-up supply yeah. as of four days ago. Yeah. And I'm back. I brought the travel packs when I went to uh, Los Angeles last time. Yeah. So I gave... Athletic Greens a try because I wanted better gut health, increased energy, immune system support. You hate taking vitamins or pills like me. And I wanted a supplement that actually takes great. I take it every morning, in the morning, before working out, before running, before having your coffee or starting your day. It makes me feel unstoppable. And you know you're doing something good for your body, like giving it the nutrition that it craves and covering all your nutritional bases. Listen. It's hard to keep a supplement routine, you know? I find it hard to keep up with pills and different supplement routines that comes with a different bunch of products. And it's hard to know where to start and supplements who to trust, but AG1 makes it so much easier. Why take a bunch of things when you can just mix one scoop of powder in water every day and it actually tastes good. AG1 gives you increased energy and mood support, making it easy to live your best life. We're out here trying to be the best. All of us, we're looking for life hacks, and that's why I've come to love and trust AG1 by Athletic Greens, the all-in-one formula that makes it easy to cover my nutritional bases every single day. Listen, you're looking for an easier way to take supplements. Athletic Greens is giving a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. You just go to athleticgreens.com slash boyscast. That's athleticgreens.com slash boyscast. Check it out.
an extremely amount of wins for the boys this week. Never, boys never <laughs> not winning. Boys be winning. Boys are never not winning. This man used a burka to disguise himself to participate <laughs> in the women's chess tournament. <laughs> well, he kind of took an L, actually. <laughs> I know. This wasn't the best one. I shouldn't have started with this in my category of wins for the boys. But basically, yeah. so this dude, but the funny part, so this basically this guy, it was ladybugs. in Kenya. This is Ladybugs. <laughs> yeah. This is, the, this is the Kenyan version of Ladybugs. <laughs> Starring Rodney Dangerfield, <laughs> but it's just so funny. Oh, with a Muslim, but it's like literally for the modern era. They go, okay, it's Muslim. Exactly. Wears a burqa, the black guy, like just it's got all the fixins, right? All stuff, but it's, like, it's Disney. Just, so, and how? What happened originally? They even said in the article that none of them wanted to be culturally insensitive, so no one said anything when this guy wasn't like. <laughs> so he basically like wasn't saying anything, and they said his shoe. He didn't even like have uh, women's shoes on. Yeah, he just had like yeah. a pair of Tims underneath. <laughs> Like, at first, they were like, yeah, nothing wrong here. And People. this guy wasn't, like, pranking. He was like, he needed the money. Yeah, he needed he, the money. He, <laughs> yeah. Well, he saw, he goes, damn, they're giving first prize to uh, for this ch women's chess tournament. It's like 3,000 pounds or something. <laughs> they found out because he was playing too good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not speaking ever. He's they're like, not speaking, he's like, he's like, he's like, No, no woman's pause. That's not possible for a woman to not speak. Why can't he just be like, hey. Have you ever seen Mrs. Doubtfire? Yeah, he could have for this at all. He should. He should have had some version of like, oh, okay, okay, check me, oh, <laughs> check, check me. All you're gonna say is check, check me, check, check me. But you are right though, it's the Mrs. Doubtfire thing though. But like, it's still funny. Like the idea of getting together a female, a team of female, like everyone that's trying to like fi fire, uh, do like quotients or whatever. It's like, oh, this comedy show is only we know it has just as many females as men. It's like just four, five guys, and then five guys in burkas. Yeah, it's like, a super diverse it's like comedy a, show. Wow, it's like the life hack where you go in, <laughs> you go. You go to someone's like advertising office, and, or maybe not advertising, like accounting office. It's like actuarial. It's like an actuarial office, and you go in. It's just like ten guys, and then ten people with burkas. <laughs> I mean, legit. <laughs> where you like, from speaking of Canada, you're like, you want to get a show on CBC. Like you're like a white dude comic in Toronto trying to get a show on CBC. Just like throw on the fucking burka. You, literally on site, they give you a show. It's everyone in burkas. So you go, I have such a crazy lived experience. You want to hear my? Uh, you know that guy Napoleon? Yeah, super funny. Me and him had like the best thing, saying that. Do you know, like, um, so basically, uh, with like the the like trans people in women's basketball or something like that. Do you know how they had like the Adam Sandler movie where he's like the scout? And you know, if you're like a basketball scout or whatever, they know if someone's like seven foot and fucking like you mm. know the Everywhere. the throws of Africa. Like the, the yeah, word yeah, gets out. They've got their ear to the ground. Like that's the job. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, that's how they found. I think like Hakeem Olajuwon <laughs> and all like Serge Ibaka. Dikembe Mutombo. He started Mutombo. playing basketball like in his twenties, right? Yeah, Pascal Siakam even actually on the record. Yeah, so there's so there's always like there's been a few movies of finding these like hidden gems or whatever right so it's like a, a women's basketball scout to the movie and he just he's like he gets his ear to the ground of anyone that transitioned <laughs> so basically like there's like he's in Brooklyn and there's like this bartender that transitioned he's like in the corner with his thing and the guy like he, he the guy throws out the fucking like throws out a wrapper and lands in the garbage right, like, he's, you, know, you order two beers he takes the caps off of them and goes, Ch -ch -ch. Yeah. there's like the cap in the yeah, garbage go, and the guy's like hey kid oh you God. ever played ball and she's like what she's like some some <laughs> Mr. Barista, like what? Goes, hey kid, you want to play in the WNBA? <laughs> so it's like a a male basketball coach that's coaching the female team, and they like he's got to win this championship <laughs> or he loses his job. And he, so he's just like scouting around all the places, like he's at the marches, like with all the trans people. But he's looking. Yeah, he's just like looking. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, you mind talking? You know when Ace Ventura is like uh, he's going, he gets everyone to punch him with the ring to find yeah, out yeah, if yeah, the yeah, ring has the like, stones. He's like looking around, be like. God, please tell me that woman is not on stilts right now. And he just walks over to her. <laughs> and he's just like, hey, do you mind? Oh, I just dropped this. Do you mind throwing it to me? And he puts his hands in a hoop. <laughs> so this dude's just. Yeah, it's essentially like guys is traveling around the world finding the perfect people. I think that just that's transition. actually it was a movie. Uh, the air up there when I was a kid. About... <laughs> he's hanging. He's hanging outside the gender dysphoria clinics with a sign, <laughs> but through the sign he has his binoculars. <laughs> he's, he's disguised as like a Matt Walsh protester. Damn man. <laughs> I hope that we're, we, I mean, people are predicting it, but I, I, it seems like we're maybe only a few years away from you just write that script and then some AI thing will just crank you out that movie. Uh, yeah, that would be amazing. Wouldn't that be so sick? All these stupid things we have. Uh, right now. Just, it, just write it. They'd have to hack it. AI, if you crashed AI to crank that out now, AI would just give you a script that's just like one word. It says you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> yeah. But it, you know, it would give you some resources of sensitivity training that you yeah, should exactly. attend. Yeah. <laughs> Someone shows up at your house, you go, that's not funny. Okay. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, someone in a suit shows up. <laughs> so here. Goes, Knock it off. Knock it off. Drink a Bud Light. Sam Altman shows up. <laughs> Knock it off, man. Danny said that uh, you said that uh, you were in the sticks this weekend doing your show, and you said you went to the bar and the guys were arguing over the, the Bud Light. <laughs> it was so good. The, the manager at the club, he goes, "Let's go." Uh, He's like, let's go to like my watering hole. It's like way out of town. I was like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. And we went and it's like, just like, you know, it looks like kind of up north, northern Ontario. Everything's wood. It's just like, everybody's grabbing the remote, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, you know, they're like, feeling at home there. Exactly. Everybody's feeling at home. Everybody knows. <laughs> someone walks in. Everybody knows her name, like that kind of place. And there's like a bunch of well, guys. Well, it's all the same name. Randy. Yeah, all, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Randy, and then, Randy. And, and then a bunch of guys are drinking Bud Light because that's their beer that they're uh, can't stop drinking and then other people are drinking like Coors Light but like people who drink Bud Light everybody's like calling them gay and stuff <laughs> and like I was about to like I think I said one thing about Bud Light and the guy's like easy alright alright like, <laughs> like he's like enough. the new guy is not coming in here and giving me shit about Bud Light okay <laughs> You thought you were going to get in on the action. You well, I just was that. like, yeah, he goes, oh, it's Bud Light. Huh? People drink Bud Light. The guy's like, all right. He's like, that's you trying to, you were trying to fit in with the Coors guys. You bought a Coors and you go stand with them. Look at this queer. And the guy goes, who's the new guy? <laughs> yeah, I st stood out like a sore thumb. I was like, uh, can I get a bourbon old fashioned? Dude, this place had, no, this place had a rule though, a handwritten sign that said um, no more than two shots per day. No. Yeah. You can only order two that's shots That's been a, a problem, huh? That's been... <laughs> That that's been, been a big that's problem. Been a real issue. For Do you know them. who that probably is from? Like their wives that, like you know, coming in with black eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but that's a very established rule. Like, and it said like no exceptions. You can't buy more than two shots. And they go like per that's day. A, there's got to be some misdoubt fires in per, that situation. I mean, but it's like per day. Like I was in there at two p.m. Well, those guys like the like, shots probably too. Yeah, I know. That's so funny though that there's like a divide between the Coors Light guys and the, the well, the, the Bud, Bud Light people guys. are just like, yeah, this is my identity. I'm not like it's it's um like Ford versus like Chevy, you know? Yeah, exactly. They're just like you don't go switch. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you kidding? My brother, my brother had a funny comment. He, me he measured me. And he was like, he goes, basically, my buddies are split between ironically drinking Bud Light or ironically shooting it in solidarity with Kid Rock. <laughs> he goes, I have, two, I have two groups of friends. Groups that are like, oh, ha, ha, we're gay, or groups that are like, I'm basically pulling out their guns and shooting it. <laughs> I mean, the ha, ha, we're gay things are like, at least you just get to drink your favorite beer still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to, for the rest of their life, they have to ironically drink Bud Light. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm a big homo. And, uh, <laughs> Imagine I was doing this for real, <laughs> and the whole case, yeah. <laughs> you're doing returns at the beer store, you know, you're like two for a Bud Light, just like on the rolling thing, rolling down there. <laughs> 24, might as well suck 24 dicks, probably, I guess. Anyway, it's going to have my dollar. <laughs> you're just constantly. <laughs> I'm just. Look at me. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm on hormones and all that stuff. I'll be a woman it. soon. I'm, yes, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I eat the can. I'm gay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. that's good shit. So the other win from the book for the other well, there's a couple more, but the second win for the boys was the football guy, uh, soccer. That's what oh, okay. we call it Free. here. <laughs> Footy, in it. So basically, uh, his name's Akiaf Hakimi. Yep. And his wife filed for divorce and demanded half his property, but she was, however, informed by the court of her millionaire husband owns nothing and all his property is registered under his mother's name. So this is the thing we sort of talked about, and then people were saying, you can't really pull that off. But I've, I was saying forever, it's like, so many rappers have done this forever. Yeah, I will say, they're saying his salary, he makes, what, a million, he makes 215 grand a week. Yeah, exactly. But they go, it, and he's worth 70 million, but they're like, so what, his mom signed his contract? Or like... No, he gave it to her. Every week? I guess so, yeah. Like, every week he just cuts her a check? You're just saying the logistics of it, you're not sure oh, I'm just, of. like, wondering, like, are, like his PSG, his team, are they sending it directly to the mother? Is there... Uh, well, I don't know yeah, about that part. I guess you can look it up if you want. I mean, definitely, yeah, they say well, he does not own any property Somehow or money he pulled it off. Yeah. But, I mean, you're allowed to buy your mom a house. It's of like, course. So this is what I was sort of saying, like, wh this is what everyone does, and people were kind of like, no, you kind of can't do that. It doesn't work like that. And it seems like it can. I think it's you can't do it, like, once you're... 
the divorce is starting, you can't be like, oh, now I'm buying my mom a house. Know. You go, no, that is, you can't do that. But while you're married. Also, you this can, is somewhere else. It might be a little different here. Yeah, like, this is in, they, uh, they, I mean, listen, this is, is the France. thing. There is a bunch of like dudes right now on the internet that are kind of saying, like, you know, marriage doesn't make sense if you're a dude that has more money because it's like, it's like it really is like, you know, there's some, I think Dick Magistrate was like marriage is slavery. <laughs> yeah. But like, if you have way more money and the prenups don't really like hold, it was like, it, if a girl wants to be married, you are like, it is such a fucking, like, if you're, especially if you're like an, a guy that has money, you're like, you're not, like, this would be the risky inv yeah. riskiest well, investment I, I've I, ever made in my life. I sent you the thing, the guy, the goat of divorces. Someone sent that to me. Insane. This, this, yeah. This, explain this that old guy. dude who was like a, you know, a billionaire or whatever, <laughs> married some chick. So crazy. And then they went on vacation to Dominican Republic, which is apparently the only country in the world where you can file for divorce without telling the other person. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like the only place where it could be like a single uh, side divorce or whatever. So then they went on vacation right after he got married divorced his wife and then they were together for 20 years she had no idea that they were divorced and then 20 years later she goes i want a divorce and he goes don't worry. all good we're already divorced yeah good good, then, good news yeah, yeah good news we're already divorced because she's like and i want all the assets she goes that eh, well good. you're gonna happen to know that you're already if you divorced. have a time machine yeah yeah, yeah he goes, i mean i guess i can just you know <clears throat> see in the future yeah so i just I, knew uh, you were gonna want this so i went ahead and did it for you yeah 20 years ago and then so she, <laughs> she just get anything and everyone's calling him the goat of divorce i mean that is crazy goat move yeah but i'll, I'll tell you what, what like maybe wouldn't be a goat move if like he just died and she didn't get anything she'd be like what the hell yeah for sure like Imagine she just died and he was like, because they she were they were together for ten years or whatever. Like she stuck it out for a while. Of course. But imagine he just like died and she didn't get anything. And he was like, well, because I thought you were going to divorce me. He's like, okay, you were wrong, and yeah. now you're just screwing me for no reason. But I guess you could have him in the will. Yeah, you get him in the will. And I mean, there's also like there's lots of things like that happen where you know. Well, you're like, hey, listen, if I die, kids money. if I die, you get the money. But if you divorce me, we were we're I, I mean, this happens with famous people. I think all the time where like you know some some famous guy who's like you know 80 and then marries some hot chick and then uh for his like you know last few years and then dies and then it's like oh it turns out he changed his will and left all of his money to this like new chick and nothing to his family oh, it's a fucking the yeah, guy piss me off i'll tell you of that course. much <laughs> I mean, if you're the kids and you're like what it's like is this lady who's clearly taking advantage of my like dad in his last like years now has owns all his shit it was the howard b stern or whatever what's the guy howard h stern Who's that? There's a guy named Howard Stern, but it's oh, not. Oh yeah, yeah, that <laughs> was with uh, Howard Stern with uh, Anna Nicole Smith. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's a classic case. Yeah, but there is, that, a, yeah. So there is a lot of people that are kind of like, yeah, you have to do all this stuff because there's, you know, unless you just, you know, whatever, have the exact same amount of money. Mm -hmm. And there is, a, I guess, there is sort of a part where you're like, listen, if you fucking have money and the girl like isn't working raising your kids or whatever like I get there is some like fair amount that has made sense but I think the idea is that people are like yeah the divorce courts are not fair. yeah they're not fair well there's a lot of people uh, that you know I think the, there's the Andrew Tate thing recently where he like he's posting about who knows it's true that he bought his friend like a, a fucking new car because basically like this guy had a house or whatever and basically got divorced and he ended up like you have to essentially pay for all the lawyers and stuff and it comes out of whatever mm -hmm. they were like it comes out of the guy's end the guy the girl gets the kids so she got all the money so it's like basically she took like more than half his things he basically liquidated his car she got all that stuff and the guy just like kind of lost everything yeah. I mean, that scenario does exist I mean, Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall is like famously he couldn't go back into Canada yeah because his divorce like settlement was so uh, I have a buddy who has one of those like too. bad and the thing is they when he got divorced they his alimony was based off of the money he was making while he was on news radio the entertainment people get real screwed and he's on like, that I don't make this kind of money every year he's like I made that kind of money for five years yeah or three or whatever however many years uh you know, news radio was on the air until fucking Andy Dick fucked it up. And then, how did uh, he fuck it up? Because uh, he got Phil Hartman's wife what? back on drugs, and then she then went and oh, killed yeah. Phil Hartman. <laughs> I forgot that that was like the story. Was that he, that? So that's what ended it. And then, well, Phil Hartman died, and then that, there was maybe a year. Oh, that was, after that's that. nuts. Yeah, but it was yeah. Andy Dick got Phil Hartman's I'm wife back on more drugs. More people like don't hate Andy Dick because of that. Yeah. I always wonder what what was that? Why did that home have a gun in it? Like, like it just seems weird. Like you're saying, Phil, the, Hartman, Phil Hartman doesn't seem like the type to be packing like, a like guy that. To be like have a pistol in his house, yeah. I guess. But yeah, so there is a lot of. I mean, 
It is interesting though, because there's stuff you can do. It seems like, but there it's, is, you know, uh, who gets screwed the most is the in between people. I feel like rich guys, like really rich, where you have like the top of fucking lawyers. You probably set yourself up so you don't get screwed that hot. Yeah, it's like the guy that makes like four hundred grand a year for the last ten years, and then like his family's kind of worth like two point five million, like yeah. after all assets. I feel like that's the guy that walks I mean, away guess, like with all his money gone. I guess it what depends on your definition. I actually was reading like a couple weeks ago about this hedge fund guy in new york israel englander is his name uh-huh yeah and uh it was like in the page six like you know yeah, yeah, i think i remember york, remember because he his wife left him for a chick i remember this yeah and we talked he, about and it. He, yeah or whatever he got a billion dollars or she got a billion is what the how much was. does he have like 10 yeah but that's what i mean she probably signed a prenup i don't man i don't know if she did i think because it was before he was rich that they got married like he, they they were together for the come up. So that's what I'm saying. Those the real the real money fucking weasels out. Yeah. It's the media money that I mean, always what do you gets mean? screwed. Fucking same with Jeff like anything. Bezos got the you got a. a the I know. One. As I'm as the whole time I've been saying this yeah. point, Bezos was sticking out of my mind as the exception. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but I know you, you mean. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the thing is, no scenario where Jeff Bezos is starting from scratch. Whereas, like, there are guys who have. You know, who make a like a quarter million? Who are like, yeah, okay, but Bezos what, still didn't give her half. Did he? Did he actually just give her straight up half? I think she down got the middle? like half, yeah, like somewhere in that ballpark. Well, Bezos does he not have a? He needs a better lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Because I feel like there's guys that have got a better deal. But anyway, yeah. it's like all, all this stuff sort of usually, you know, you always kind of mention the healthcare thing or whatever. But like even the taxes, like it screws over like the almost rich. It's like the almost rich is like where you really yeah, fucking. For sure. But once you switch over to like your rich rich, it's like all those guys, like they don't even fucking have cash. They take out loans on their insurance yeah, policies oh, yeah, and, and they, all their you know, stocks and stuff. You, and they, yeah. yeah, you basically take a loan against your money and then you pay right off the interest or whatever it is yeah. and you're, you know, they're mm -hmm. never cash, like, you know, so yeah, a lot they're of They're never super liquid like that. Yeah, so it's the middle people that get screwed. Always. So the other one, so that was the, and then the next uh, win for the boys is that uh, people are selling AI generated nudes on Reddit and they, they look crazy real. Like, I don't know if you've seen them. Yeah. yeah so, so, and basically there's a bunch of dudes that are like coming publicly and like not happy that it, my product, I found out that it was fake. You know what I mean? I mean, that's a win and a loss for the boys though, because it's a win for the boys selling them, but a loss for the boys buying them. Well, this is where yeah. I'm saying it's a win. So maybe we can live in our own narratives, but in my opinion, opinion you have a situation where only fans is now going to be run by dudes it is <laughs> no it's already but like even the girls are going to get put out of business it's like oh, yeah. only fans is going to be guys buying fake photos of girls from dudes <laughs> please open uh, you are right though there's a lot of behind every one of these like you know uh, party girls that has no OnlyFans. There's some like you know d Saudi Arabian dude. Yeah, I mean like if you're <laughs> with a marketing agency. If you're chatting with the girl, you go, oh, I'm actually get to talk to her. You go, you ain't talking to her. That's the servant, but I'm saying that there's guys that are sort of running the whole operation. Yeah, yeah, that too. The, the but now the even more so. So it's basically dudes. Because one thing you've said has been like it's unfair that you know, you've said this personally. You said it's unfair that uh, girls get to start OnlyFans, but where's my OnlyFans? Yeah. Like I couldn't just start an OnlyFans. Yeah, it's it's just unfair. So that's what right now girl like dudes can start an only fans and you don't have to show your titties you just show a fake girl's titties uh -huh. see i prefer doing it the old-fashioned way where you find like a kind of under the radar only fans girl and then you just do the marketing and then basically like when people ask you for your from your fake one you just go request those videos from her and middleman it you start a fake OnlyFans <laughs> with a girl that has no subscribers, yeah. but you're better at marketing. I mean, no, you just have an eye for talent, and she has a problem <laughs> with marketing, right? So you go, that's a and that you could give, be a top. And what earner. do you give her? Two percent. You just subscribe to her OnlyFans, and then you start a different. You don't give her any percentage. Start a different. You, site. She, you subscribe to hers, and then you start <laughs> your own OnlyFans, pretending to be her. Now we're talking. Yeah. So, anyways, this is a that's a big win for uh, dudes that are in that game. <laughs> You're right, it is a bit of a small loss for fucking dudes that are buying it, but those guys, you know. I mean, I will say, so though, they what? were going to get rinsed by a real woman. If, uh, listen, if the guy's doing a good job making the fakes, what do you care, yeah. really? Well, we're keep, you know, like, is what? it really you that know, much like, better? It's not your girlfriend anyway. It's like, you know, it's like, is it that much better knowing it's a real person? I guess so, but it's like, if the guy's doing a good job, then what did it just, I, no, I, none I'm, of your business. I'm actually retracting, because I think it is a win for the boys, because you know how black people are like, and they'll well, be cheaper. you want to keep the money in the community? <laughs> this is keeping the money within the boys. <laughs> it's keeping the money it's in boys the community. boys paying boys. <laughs> like Jewish people do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> It's like, we're just, sorry, ladies. So that's what sort of it is. It's keeping yeah. the money in the community. In the boys' community. That's a win for the boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I retract. I'm going to take another quick second here to tell you about Next Evo 
CBD, Next Evo Naturals. Now, you want to do a lot of research before you, you know, before you're making a purchase. You're looking up reviews, you're reading articles, you're finding expert sources. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of things people are up to. And doing your research before you buy means better informed choices, especially when it comes to stress or sleep products like CBD. Next Evo Naturals, which I was taking the normal CBD, Danny has just told me that the yeah you had a the recommendation sleep, the sleep ones dude right this is yes well it was a new thing so that's why the sleep ones has been a big recommendation yeah from danny polishuk who says that this is have you done, tried other ones uh I, I have my girlfriend swears by these ones when they send them to us she takes them a study by an independent lab confirmed that some brands contain up to 60 percent less cbd than they claim to on a label there's a lot of hucksters out there. A lot of hucksters. We're not here to point fingers. We're just telling you that this is the real deal. They are what they say they are. With Next Evo Naturals, you can trust you're getting the best of the best. I'm sure there's people out there who already take CBD. Why not do Next Evo Naturals as the most clinically studied CBD brand on the market? Next Evo takes research to the next level. So that's kind of their main thing. Is they're out there doing the studies. Yeah, they're finding out what's actually going on here. They're not just throwing it at the wall like you're just some Joe Blow CBD dealer. No. So I one thing that I've been doing CBD for is the post workout soreness, and that definitely eases the pain of that. Having more peace of mind. Yeah, and you know just waking up feeling a little better, a little a uh, little higher quality of sleep for sure. Okay, so the big sleep recommendation from Danny, and this is going to be a yeah. big. Uh, yeah, we're we're going to get you all tuned up and fixed up. We're going to get you all tuned up and fixed up. Yeah, we will. Uh, upgrade to a CBD brand that takes quality as seriously as you take your overall health. Next Evo, test their products multiple times to ensure you get 100% of what's on the label. Next Evo uses Smart Sorb CBD, proven to have 30 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes and four times the overall absorption of other products. They have Stress CBD Complex, which is Smart Sorb CBD, and the whole plant, Ashkawanga. Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. Yeah, I take some of that stuff. Clinically proven to reduce stress up to 70% and improve concentration by 50%. And cranks up your tea. Cranks up the... Does, is that no, true? That's, yeah, I literally... That's what I take it for. Oh. Triple Action CBD Sleep Smart Sorb CBD helps you calm your mind, fast-acting melatonin, to get you to sleep fast and controlled release melatonin so you can sleep longer and wake up feeling more refreshed. So, listen. We're getting this together, the boys. This is something I'm doing. Danny's already doing it. Upgrade your CBD. Go to nextevo.com slash boyscast to get 20% off your first order of $40 or more. That's 20% off $40 or more at nextevo.com slash boyscast. Okay, there's this mother, right? That we found uh, on your tango. It's probably <laughs> maybe the craziest one ever. So I don't know if we'll do the second article, but just the type of article she's writing. Seven ways to not raise a little rapist. <laughs> this is the Seven. first one. Yeah. But the second, we're going to do it. And this is the same. We'll do the second one first. But this is the type of story she wrote. It's the same woman wrote this same article. And she goes, seven reasons I strongly encourage my son to wear sparkly nail polish. So this is this is a fan favorite of the boys, guys, where we find just the wackiest parents that are forcing their yep. kids. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But she's got so a bit of insight on this lady. Is those are the kind of articles that she's been writing. I know you like to do the deep dives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually didn't look into her. Elizabeth Broadbent. So Elizabeth Broadbent is up to some wacky stuff. She's got this son, right? And most of her articles are like you know. You know how to not make my son a rapist like why my son's gonna be gay why I'm making my son sparkly nail polish Why I'm transing my infant like this is All the kind of stuff. stuff she's up to right and then she goes here's seven lessons I strongly encourage to my son to wear sparkly nail polish and He's so these are the reasons why it's great and it is funny because it's like If you are those if you if you go it's one thing if your son's like hey I want to wear nail polish, but to be like Hey, let's you know pop it on. Of course, yeah. Like if you if your kid is like, hey, now give me your hands. Like there's one thing if you're putting your nail polish on and then your gay son comes, I would like I, some I don't too. I want to taste it. You know, just like that's how it happened all throughout history. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is that your gay son would be like, I, I want a little, little like bit of the action. Too, mom, and then you'd be like, oh. Here you go. Do you like that? And right. He goes, yes. And you go, ah. But she's honestly, the, it's the opposite. She keeps doing her nails in front of him, and she's like, are you not going to ask? Like, yeah, what's, yeah, what's going yeah, on uh, here? You want to, like, put down your video game controller and find out what your mother's doing right yeah, now? Yeah, what the fuck's going on here? And it is funny, because, like, it's obviously, and I get the, the, like, sort of rock and roll nail polish guy, uh, 
That's almost like not that crazy right now. Like there's rappers right now that wear nail polish, right? So there's yeah. the first part of it where it's like this thing that you're that that like kind of like wearing like black nail polish is like a fairly common style that like a lot of pussy crusher dudes wear. Yeah, you yeah, know what I sure. mean? So it's not even it's not even at all that crazy. Yeah. But the truth is, she's like that's why she goes, it has to be sparkly. So she's turning it sparkly. And then on top of that, you're just like well, is your son that dude? Like, it's a very different. Thing. Like, you're like, is your son like a nerdy dude? And you're like, you know what? I'll fucking send him to school or nail polish. But it's like a five year old. Out. She's doing this. So she literally says she has like a one, a three, and a five year old. Well, she, she probably makes them put the hands there together, and she sort of does one at the same time. Just <laughs> yeah, takes a big. What? She has a roller. Just like. Well, this is what happens when you have a mom that doesn't have. She probably doesn't have. Like, she has her blogging job, right? So she's working from home. She's just sitting at home all day, and then she's just projecting her entire fucking, you know, life onto her kids. <laughs> so, yeah. Slash. This is what happens when your mom is a blogger. They're always on the on the lookout for new blog content. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Why I'm why I'm making my son deep throated dildo? Yeah, you're like <laughs> well, I don't know. It seems like a good idea. It seems like it seems like uh, the ladies over at Your Tango would like that. There's another good one. So this is stepping away from that. There's this guy, Brent Henrik, right? Uh, he's Brent Henrik, pro choice, and he's like you know some guy that ran for like some position somewhere. Okay. He goes, Amber and I have compiled the true emergency kit for Brianna and her friends. Plan B: condoms, pregnancy tests, and just found out that I can add Narcan to that kit for free. <laughs> so, it, <laughs> and he's going on about how he has it for any time his friends, uh, his his daughter's friends come over. Yeah, he makes them know that the kit's available. It's like that's the kind of thing that like the other girl's dad comes and kicks the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're not allowed to go over to the house that's encouraging use of fucking fentanyl. I mean, I understand the Narcan maybe to the degree to you're like kids. His daughter's will... twelve. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're like, all right. I just love the idea. I mean, Yo, can you imagine? Like, you sent your your daughter goes over to a guy's house, and then she comes back. She's like, "Oh yeah, uh, Brianne's dad gave me a bunch of condoms." <laughs> she's like, what, ex- so, "What? You call it? What the fuck are you giving my daughter condoms oh, for?" Yeah. She goes, "Hey, it's an exclusive. <laughs> hey, just stop being a fuddy daddy, man." Yeah. This is a- I think it'd be kind of fuck. Yeah. You, who do you think you are? You're my daughter condoms, like in a dildo. You go, "Hey, they're, hey, they gotta, they're gonna start exploring their bodies. You can choose to." <laughs> Just bury your head in the sand, or you can live in reality. Your daughter's going to be touching your vagina. You can be part of that or not part of it. Yeah, we're both not going to be part of it. We got pregnancy tests. <laughs> checking if you're pregnant. It's like, I'm not... What? Just constantly checking if your 12-year-old the plan daughter's B pregnant. for a 12-year-old. You're like, that's a fucking decision. I don't know. Like... <laughs> What else was on the list? Plan B, Narcan? Plan B, Narcan, condoms, lube. Lube. <laughs> this guy's... So this is the, I mean, this the, guy's cool, up this is the classic cool like that's the house. It's you go a trying over to get, be cool, parents. Where you go over to get drunk at their house. I know, but it's funny to be like the oh, I'm cool parent, but sort of. It's like they're they're mixing the I'm cool parent with I'm doing the right thing parent. It's like they've got sort of a good mix of the two. You know like, what I mean? Narcan's the one where I go like, yeah, you don't want people to die. I guess if your kids are if you have that type of kid who's like you think they're going to be doing like coke when they're twelve, that might be laced. I well, guess. you have to explain to them. Yeah, you probably most of them you have to explain to them what coke is and then explain well, to them. Oh, for sure. That. I mean, you know your kid needs nar. Like you know the type of kid that needs a fucking nar. <laughs> probably around. the type of kid who has this dad. <laughs> probably. And Listen, then you don't I would want rather your- rather you do the fentanyl with me. Yeah, and then you're like, I don't want you hanging out with the that family. <laughs> it's funny the dad being like, you'd rather smoke weed with me, and none of them want to. The so dad's like, ah, more for me. And he's just like <laughs> sitting in the room. He's like, just tell me if you guys want some. He's just. <laughs> You sure you guys don't want to hit? No, I'd rather you no. do it here. I'd rather listen. I, <laughs> that's good shit. <laughs> it's good shit that I'd rather you do here. So these are the reasons he's ex- for the nail polish for his son. He's expressing his self identity. My son isn't letting society tell him how or how he should be. But it's like well, yeah, but he's letting his mom tell him how he should be. I mean, I feel like it's not like I. I mean, I don't ever think about it this way, but I don't think that the reason I don't wear nail polish is because of society. Right. You know what I mean? Like I don't. I don't think it's society that's holding. Well, me this back. is the thing that I, it's like the whole thing that drives me nuts or whatever. Because you go the reason. The dudes who wear nail, like dudes who would like put on nail polish to be like to make like some statement. Yeah. 
the most of the time you'd be doing it because it's not acceptable. Exactly. As soon as it's like all dudes wear nail polish, then it's not cool. Like it's of, not of course. Yeah, you're not yeah, doing the thing it's, anymore, it's, right? Absolutely. It's like if every like it's literally you know you have a mohawk and then your parents both come up with a mohawk and you go to school and everyone has a mohawk and you go okay well this isn't I, if you can see yourself as a type of guy that wants to make a statement then the statement is the opposite. Yeah. I gotta have two mohawks <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, or, or then you. I mean, like the whole like. You know, norm core and stuff is they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna. It's it's, it's, it's a reaction. It's, yeah, it's a reaction. Like I'm gonna freak people out and dress like my grandpa. That's the whole thing with yeah. like every culture always is like the reaction to the culture like right before, right? Yeah. And it's like that's why it is kind of interesting with like to watch even when I watch like rappers, it's always kind of like you know like Odd Future. Yeah. It's a big like Coachella thing right now, right? Where Frank Ocean is like a he was from Odd Future, and then he's he was the basically the headliner this year, and then so he showed up, and then he goes. He he didn't want to he didn't want to go on stage, so he basically was like I don't even want to do it. And then he went up and he just lip sync the songs and they put Spotify and they were supposed to have like an ice rink with all these people dancing behind him and they, he said they didn't want it so they took time to melt the ice and then he went on. Why didn't he want to perform at Coachella? Well, there's different. So he basically put out a press release one way or the other through his friends being like he was so uh, depressed about his brother dying three years ago and this is a big part so he this is my theory is he wants people to know that he's like a tortured artist you know yeah. what I mean so in his mind he likes the, he, I think that I never take like most people like this at face value like I think he wants people to see what he himself is like I'm such a tortured guy right it's not yeah whereas people are just seeing it as like like, like he, he he puts a lot of importance on the lore of Frank Ocean I think so yeah, yeah. And I, but I don't think it's like working that good but I think the reason I'm saying this is like that like sort of 20 like Odd Future was very like a 21 year old it's almost like punk rock of rap where it's like punk rock was very like all these guys it was, rap music was getting very technical and it was like who's actually good at guitar mattered yeah you know sort of like rap did and then like punk was a little bit like it doesn't matter if you're good this is like not about that and then the older generation is like oh these guys can't even play and they're like yeah that's kind of the point yeah. we're like these crazy 20 year olds that are like troublemakers or whatever right and odd future was that we're like yeah we're kind of making these like silly rap songs and putting out these like half-assed videos and that's kind of like the allure and then but that only works good when you're 20 one. The same as like yeah, yeah you, you know, know what like, I mean. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a phase. Uh, yeah, like it has a time time and place. And you so know. all of these guys that were like the sort of the the simple reaction. You either go one of two ways. Like it's like the rappers that always sort of become the like they all eventually have to become like I'm very serious. You either go like funny or like I'm so serious and I care about the craft and I know every rapper and I knew this. Or you go I'm a depressed guy. You go like and that's what the musicians a lot of times they go full emo where it's like you know almost like Trent Reznor a little bit where it's like almost you try to create this mystique where you're just sort yeah. of around. It's a good no one really cares what you did lately. You make a lot of soundtracks. You seem to be in the mix. Nothing you've really done that culturally relevant but you seem to be in the mix still because you're sort of this enigma weird guy and I think that what happened is, is a lot of these kind of guys are going for that like okay the wild crazy guy things like I'm getting too old for that so I need to be the like mist and I know he was like the gay one so he wasn't totally that he was yeah. a little emo to begin with but there's like he's like I'm the I'm the like weird tortured guy so they have to be that right do you, do you think he's like Ari Spears where he goes like I can be the only weird tortured guy on the show I think I th he goes like he goes. Whoa, whoa! What? There's another weird torture guy on the show. Are you kidding me? Ari Spears didn't want another black comics on yeah, the show. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so that's what happens. Is like if you're the if you're the kid that's like, you know, I'm gonna be the weird tortured kid, and then your parents come home and they're like, Dad's tortured yeah, right now. Dude, I'm oh. not tortured like and then, you. And then mom's lying on the couch. She goes, I can't even make dinner in my existential <laughs> dread. The kid's like, Ah, you know what? I'm gonna get a job. Yeah, I think I uh, want to be an accountant. <laughs> right. It looks pretty good to me so right this now. Is, this is what's happening on a grand scale. The mom's coming home and she's like, you know, I. You're a, I'm a woman and I'm gonna wear a freaking tool belt and you're a man and you're gonna wear nail polish and that's how our house operates and the kids like you know probably he either goes okay. one of two ways either you're like a little bitch that just does whatever your mom wants mm -hmm. in which case you're gonna be not equipped to deal with this at school if you show up and you're like telling everyone about your nail polish or the other way is you're gonna go or you're gonna be a guy that can like you, you can stand up to people that are different from you and you're gonna want to do the different thing of your mom because she's gonna ruin right. it for you yes yes exactly that's very well said yeah yeah it's not gonna work He'll, so the, her first thing is it helps him assure his self identity, which it doesn't because it just helps him. He doesn't know his identity. He's he doesn't. One. He has no idea. Or he's three. 
<laughs> that I mean, there's a one, three, and a five-year-old. <laughs> Two of them are not even making memories at this moment, so they're, they have no identity. It's just an infant with his nail they polish. They eat and they shit. That's their identity. <laughs> well, this is like almost that. Like ten Five is you're like, okay. Ten years ago, you would have said this is like child abuse where you go. It's like the dad that has a girl that like forces them to be a tomboy, essentially. Yeah. This is the mom version where it's like you have like a normal son and you're like trying to force him to be essentially like a gay boy. Yeah. He'll, she goes, he'll always be the boy who wore sparkly nail polish around the playground, and he was completely his own person. So she's like got this whole narrative where he's basically going to school and he's got the nail polish on. And yeah, all the kids are you know, like, he's hey. totally his own person as he's crying as I'm applying <laughs> nail polish to him. They're like, please, mom, stop. You, got, you are your own person. Now sit still. It's also a lot of this stuff too. Is like it really is like women have no idea what it's like to be a man too. Because it's like she's say, she's like and it'll be you know and the other kids will accept him more. And it's like I'm I'm telling you they won't. And it was like there's nothing worse than like a mom telling like her boy how to be a man like by giving him advice on how to be a woman. <laughs> yeah. Which is what I mean. That's what she thinks a man right. should be. So let me tell you about dating. What you want to do is you're gonna put on your best outfit. <laughs> And you just sort of wait around, and then they ask you for the thing. Make them bring you flowers. Hold, have them hold the door yeah. for you. Make sure when you're with the girl, like, don't give it up too easy. <laughs> give it up. He's like, give I'm five. <laughs> I'm five. What kind huh? of advice is for a five year old? Now, when you're pulling out the schlong. He's doing what he likes. He's not letting an increasingly gendered child culture dictate his likes and dislikes. Sparkles make him happy. Well, it's like, yes, because at that age, like, whatever you're... Like, if your dad likes football, then you're going to like football. It's like, what do you kind of just do whatever your parents tell you to do? Like, this is... The baby wants whatever his oldest brother has, but my middle son contemplates the nail polish cabinet. You're talking about a one and a three-year-old. Yeah. They don't know what a nail polish cabinet is. They don't know what nails are or <laughs> well, polish fucking learn or if they cabinets. Want dinner. They don't know any of these things. <laughs> they're, like, learning shapes and stuff at this point, and, like, they don't know color, like... That's such a fucking... The more so is, like, the dad's probably just happy. Well, he's probably a wacko, too, but it's, like, yeah. the dating that mom, you're just like, okay, you, you, you just polish the kids up. Leave me alone. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, he's, like, in the basement just sniffing that shit, being like... Oh, he's probably just so happy she hasn't fucking decided she's a they-them yet. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's just a matter of when. That's 100% a matter of when. <laughs> when she runs into nail polish articles, 100%. She's got a non-binary article coming yeah, real goes, soon. Hmm, what's a good one? She gets so jealous when she sees other bloggers oh. writing articles. Like, why my husband couldn't accept that I'm non-binary? She's like, fuck, that'd be nice. Yeah, she, that was an option? Shit. <sighs> Whew. I'll tell you what. She's one article getting a lot of clicks away from t t denouncing her gender. I mean, I wish we could have some sort of... Should we, like, set an alert for ourselves for, like, one year from today <laughs> to just go check check back? See if she's a boy now? If she's a... Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, just well, set an alarm for a, 2024. You just, like, see one. It was like... Why, as a mother, I'm making my three sons, and then uh, the next article a year later is like, as a dad, my three daughters. <laughs> why, am, as a dad, why I'm making my three daughters join baseball? Yeah. <laughs> she goes fall the other way. <laughs> Probably. We're... He's exercising his bodily integrity. His body, his choice. So this, <laughs> it's sort of funny when you're like at school with a sparkly nail polish and everyone's like, he's got the sandals on, toes done too, and the other kids are like, fucking look at Jeremy, he's got the fucking nail polish on, and he goes, my body, my choice. <laughs> as, he's getting, as he's getting like wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if he goes to some like nerdy art school, art school that yeah. might be fine. You, you, if he goes to an art school, this stuff might be a little more acceptable. Or if he goes full musician guy, you know what I mean? But it's hard. That stuff's probably a little harder to pull off at six. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, as you're getting like, they're putting you in the lost and found box and sitting on it. And you're just like poking his hands through my body, my choice. <laughs> This is fucking... These are my nails. Blogger, female blogger is. My, Imagine mom telling a guy that's like beating flag. you up in high school, like to fucking my body, my choice. <laughs> he goes, your body, my choice. This is my bodily autonomy. Stop. Yeah, and you go, yeah, no, yeah, no, I'm gonna gonna be a no on that. Well, here's a good one from her. From a, this is an oldie. Everyone's too nice to tell you, but your baby is actually ugly. <laughs> the fuck. She's gone through some phases then. Oh, of course. She used to be, she was going for like a bitch. She she's was like, her original persona was like, I'm just a bitch. No, no, she's, yeah, yeah. She, she's like all over, you know, as always all over the place. She's gone through a few phases she of her Because know own. who she is as a blogger, you know? That's what, she's trying this on for size. She's going all in out of the gate, you know what I mean? Like, 
Yeah, she went, yeah, because first she was just like, fuck you, your baby's ugly, I don't give a shit. Why yeah. I'm not talking, why I don't go want to go to your wedding and I don't give a shit. Like the fucking <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, the sassy. I'm a, yeah, so the sassy woman, then she went to like, yeah. Why I'm making my son wear a blonde wig at his <laughs> communion. <laughs> Here's this one. Worse than coddling, 12 ways America treats kids like subhumans. <laughs> well, I mean, they treat them like kids. But she's, but I guess she's, <laughs> but she's like sort of doing a thing where she's like, in my kid's household, they run the household. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They go, they do whatever they want. Just they like give me a bad time. <laughs> In my house, the kids pick the bedtime, and they also pick my bedtime. I think we maybe did this. Why I'm, writing, why I'm writing this article from my bed, because my kid told me my curfew was up. Um, why my kid hasn't allowed me to eat dinner, because I touched his toys. I breastfeed my baby. He and just, I breastfeed my baby, dot, 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 and his three-year-old brother at the same time. <laughs> That's not true, is it? That's hers. Stop. Yes. <laughs> Oh, here's a good run. Oh, here's a good run. Psych meds saved me from clinical depression, <laughs> and I'm not ashamed. <laughs> psych meds. Oh, she, she's just fucking popping psych meds, standing in the middle of a crowded bus yeah. shelter with one baby on each tit. <laughs> and a three-year-old. The kids, the kids got fucking painted, ta- painted, uh, painted nails and a mohawk uh. sucking on her titty. <laughs> And then there's uh, the coup de gras. Okay, what's the coup de gras? Why I feel guilty about being a white mother. <laughs> oh, that kids are going to be feeling that one. I think we covered that one, one maybe <laughs> once upon a time. She probably feels so guilty, too. <laughs> dude, we like owe oh, your tango money. <laughs> your tango fucking rules, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is my body. There's always you. Will, you always find like that one linchpin one, where you go like the psych meds one. You go, yeah. So you always find one that ties it together. Mm-hmm. Hey, exactly. Yep. <laughs> like literally, it's always like why I'm happier than ever. And the article is right after. It's just like <laughs> why? There's nothing wrong with trying to commit suicide. <laughs> Well, I mean, trying to commit suicide was just a cry for help. Yeah, and then the next one's like, well, I'm actually happy. I don't care who has. That's crazy, though, to be like, hey, why I need to take psych medication? And the next one's like, why my son's being forced to wear sparkly nail polish at Oh, here's a good one. I knew the risks. (laughs) I knew the risks, but I took drugs during my pregnancy anyways. (laughs) (laughs) That's not it. You're lying. I swear. That was the psych, the psych meds, though, I think is what she was thinking of. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, she was, I guess the risk was she was, she was there's a risk that my kid's not going to wear them, wear the nail paws that I want him to. Yeah. He's bucking gender norms. So there, we're, there it is. There we get the real reason. He's well, not doing anything. He's but, three. But it's, just, yeah, but it's also funny being like, my son's bucking gender norms. It's like, okay, but if he doesn't want to be trans, why does he have to buck gender <laughs> norms? It's like, you only have to buck gender norms if you think you're going to be trans. She's like, well, what? If he's just like going to be like a normal straight dude, like, why do you have to buck gender yeah. norms? Why? Yeah. Why doesn't your husband buck gender norms? Having sparkly nails lets him get the lets him question those norms. So she wants him to questioning things really, really young. He rises above the gender, gender dichotomy. Children are force fed. It's like which one of these two things? Like, what do you think is being more force fed? Like what she's doing, or like, <laughs> or playing with trucks? <laughs> yeah, or like yeah. a child's natural propensity to want to play with like a truck. I think if we were saying who's force feeding here, I think it's pretty obvious which of the two that's <laughs> force feeding. Force feeding your four year old kid a fucking titty. Yeah, and then the other one, oh, titty as well. The nail polish is one way to show him to question outdated gender norms. No matter what society thinks, this kid's gonna be in a fucking dress on the bus in All no time. All three of them are. <laughs> Should adopt them. Why I send my kids to school in a bra with two oranges in the breast slots, <laughs> <laughs> balloons under their shirt, and no, it was not Halloween. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Good stuff. I like how. Remember back in the good old days when uh, people would uh, four years ago, <laughs> people would abuse their kids, but they'd keep it to themselves. <laughs> Generally, the abuse it stayed in the home. People would think they would think. I think something's bad's happening at that, that house. Is, remember? And then now people are right. like, I'm gonna chronicle me abusing my kids. It is so crazy. Like this is it is one of those things. The dad might be explaining it, like probably encouraging it because when he's going for the custody battle and he wants to get the kids, he just literally like does a slideshow of all our articles in order. Yeah. <laughs> why I drank during the kids. Yeah, why I fucking He could easily be already gone too though. He might be, yeah. This yeah. could be a single I mean she mother. doesn't have one thing about the husband. 
Like my husband's a piece of shit. Nothing. So like, first of all, she probably <laughs> I, I, he might have he might have left after her article came out. Why I call my husband my wife? <laughs> <laughs> why I'm demanding my husband refer to himself as my wife? Why I now realize that our first child was actually a product of rape? <laughs> What? Yeah, he comes down. To, <laughs> Honey, can we talk about this? Because uh, I got called in the uh, manager's office at work because you said I raped you, <laughs> Yo, and that, that's where Charlie came from. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't. taking a peek at this new article, honey, and congratulations, really. <laughs> you know, just I'm glad and that you did bring in your, 20 bucks. Uh, <laughs> your career that's as something. A, <laughs> independent <laughs> blogger, but uh, it's really fucking up my income. Yes, you raped me. And also, <laughs> I'd like you to wear a dress. And he goes, okay. Um, yeah, all sex is rape, honey. <laughs> yeah, um. I don't think I'm going to be doing the dress. <laughs> but again, you might maybe give my old... Uh, Manager a little ring a -roo, tell her <laughs> just, that, that wasn't just clear true. it up. Maybe. Clearly air a little bit I feel like this might affect the kids getting some pretty bad looks down there at the plant <laughs> It's always funnier if they work at a plant. No, it's the best So they don't know what blogging is at the plant. Why my son has to drink a cup of cum a day <laughs> So this is the other one she goes another th benefit is she goes he knows that adults aren't always right so it's like sort of teaching your kids that like just because your mom tells you something it isn't right so that this uh, she's really weird mixed message you know what it is it sort of is a little bit of like a girl that has like a fantasy of the bad boy if you actually boil it deep like she can't like she pictures her son like wearing the sparkly nail polish walking down the halls like da -da -da -da, and the bullies come up like hey pussy you guys fail polish you go I'm the pussy maybe you should think about gender norms and everyone like sort of cheers for him you yeah. know what I mean and then he walks down the hall the teacher tells him his test's wrong and he goes uh, hey you're hey, you got this answer wrong and he goes or did you get this answer wrong because of your white privilege and everyone goes Corey 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 See, you Corey know, you know what actually if you could guarantee that culturally things would stay the same then you actually are setting your kids up for like a better future in a way because they do want to be playing all these dumb games to succeed in the future but the problem is by the time they're kids it's already they're like, on its way out that's what i'm saying and they're like i'm non-binary and you're like yeah nobody gives a shit that's 20 years ago nobody no, they sort of got wise for, for that i mean there still are for lots of stuff though like lots of the arts and i don't know if you saw the canadian screen awards but you know, if, if this was your mom 20 years ago in Canada, you're probably, like, thanking them when you accept, <laughs> accept your award at the Canadian Screen Awards yeah. for Best uh, Trans Two-Spirit <laughs> Native Yeah, actor. I love it. All right. In there a, was a, You know a that phrase where podcast. they say that, like, um, someone said this, but I thought it was a good way to describe, like, culture stuff where they were, like, basically they already like sort of won the war so they were shooting the survivors because yeah. it was kind of like you won the thing where it's like everyone sort of agrees racism is bad it's the worst thing to be called and it was like that's a win and they're like well what next it was like you can sort of walk around and like reprimand people but you already sort of got what you wanted so that went too far and then I think that probably that's the there's some some degree it's already happening where it's like most normal people we know I don't think I know any normal dude that wouldn't agree like yeah it's obviously uh like a uh, being like a, a woman like a man transitioning to a woman's better at basketball like yeah. even the ones that were but sort of like then you'd be like okay hold on let me just uh press record and now say that and go I don't really want to right <laughs> but I think nowadays it, that's not true I think that really on the I don't think anyone's I mean, afraid Andrew, to say that one anymore This dude Andrew Bogut who plays he used to be in the NBA I follow him on uh, Depends on what your job is and where he, you live I guess He's like retired NBA player and there in Australia they're having a this is it's kind of a first actually they are having a trans woman play with women basketball which they've done How all tall? these uh, I think pretty tall not like seven feet or whatever in the Australian league in the Australian league and he's just like yeah this is crazy and then he got absolutely like piled on and then yeah, someone in the, the, the internet and then yeah. some civilian dude who's like not in any of the stuff who works in like basketball was like just like this is kind of Maybe we should be cautious about this. And then they're like, this guy needs to be fired. Like, all that stuff. <laughs> so how long ago was that? It's like in the last couple months. It's okay. It's pretty recently, yeah. Well, I think that there's got to be, like, it's almost like the, you know, like, politicians really right now are sort of just like listen to like the most extreme people in their party and they sort of just put that into policy, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like, there's, it feels to me like there's a just increasingly large 
percentage of normal people that like I don't think I don't know do you know even any like women really that I think I do but like I think even most of the women I know if would think would wa like think that men transitioning to women and playing in the WNBA is crazy yeah again yeah if they're not involved a a any reasonable person obviously <laughs> right. but some people are not reasonable I just and think some the people spells, are so caught up I in think the, the spells worn off a little bit but maybe you're yeah. right yeah I mean definitely way more women than men well, think what, that, what were the re funny, repercussions but... to Bogut like he loses a few things no they just call him right I mean, Bud, Li and... Bud Light got pretty tuned up for trying to do you know yeah um, uh, no for him he's retired I mean he's probably career earnings over a hundred million dollars he's like retired he won an nba championship he's just he's a commentator guy on twitter now and he has a podcast about basketball so not really yeah but uh i mean just people talk shit about him call him right wing because he's like i don't think he's like i'm not right wing he's like, <laughs> he's like i just don't think women men should play with women other countries are behind america though but for three or four years you have to remember that yeah i mean he is from the country of the rubber chicken comedy club so well, like literally, if you think of like Canada, like their speeches right now, it's like you know, even like taking government money to pay for all this stuff. Like it is, like it is a bit of like a clown show over in these countries, yeah. right? Because they're just like, they're a lot of these countries turn into like a fucking Portland got to be a country. Yeah, it's just like women run. One hundred percent. Well, that's why they need the men in burkas. <laughs> yeah. That's that is the ultimate payback because it's like women run and then that that is really like one of the ultimate kind of like just like breaking their their whole system because you go well if you love women then you love a woman in a burqa yeah you they must love <laughs> you must really love a woman in a burqa yeah and double points if they sound like a man I've been saying this a bit on stage that if probably if women were in charge they probably wouldn't uh, be any if women ran stuff there wouldn't be any more wars because there'd be no money to fund the army. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, women be shopping. Women be shopping. Okay, so I don't know if you heard about this, but men with small balls have bigger hearts. I don't know if you heard about this. <laughs> small ball men have bigger hearts? No. <laughs> so apparently men with small balls are known to have bigger L hearts. And this is literally like the smaller testes. I know. Yeah. So you're probably big hearted. <laughs> I'm uh I got no I got right I'm regular, no, regular no. Ryan's just got a black void in there basically. Uh, I've actually that's that's <laughs> the, I was actually arguing with Corinne about that the other day because she was sort of saying that I'm emotionally stunted, and I was sort, uh, it's the balls that's, that's what we found we're out. finding out. But like I was no, but I think she's wrong because it, a lot of times girls sort of have this opinion that I think some of it's just like a man versus a female yeah. but a lot of times women have an opinion if like a man's not like re very like emotionally like attached all the time yeah. that like that's something like wrong with them but you're like or it's like a choice that you've made to like be able to like accomplish what you want to accomplish yeah, you know what of course. I mean you're like I don't I don't let my emotions run the show well you what's the opposite of stunted because uh, then if, if you're emotionally stunted, then women are like Andre the Giant. Well, but like, okay, so say, imagine like even when growing. you start doing like stand up or whatever, right? Yeah. Like a, a bad set like affects you, right? Of course. And then you sort of train yourself in a way that you can like take the information from that bad set without being like so fucking emotionally messed up. You know what I mean? Like, let's say, you know, someone when you're young and you really want this job or a girl breaks up with you, it's like it's going to like affect you way more. And then you sort of know how to deal with it. And then you, a lot of what makes people like screwed up over events even is the idea that like you kind of don't know what the like uh like not knowing what all the potential outcomes are you know what i mean yeah whereas like once you've been through it you're like okay worst case it's this like even that's how like psychologists walk people through not being so like melodramatic it's yeah, like yeah. okay let's just figure out what's the worst case that happens here you know what i mean so i think in this case a lot of times it's like um, males are just like more stoic I mean, but a lot I, of times you like lean into that because you're like yeah it it's a it's a it benefits you more you find in your whole life you go all the times that I was like an emotional mess were like the worst ones didn't help me in any way so yeah you go I was not emotional stunted it was if anything it's just like you're uh, like you're uh, in charge of your own fucking body it's yeah, your body your choice of course I mean that's like chicks also romanticize you know when like left eye from TLC like burned down that dude's house she like, lit the bathtub on fire because they were having like a bad bad argument or something and Andre Risen. Okay. She was dating him. I think it was Andre Risen and she like literally burned out his fucking house and chicks are like, ah, I love that. She's so in so, touch she's with so herself. In touch with her emotions. She's like, that's not good. <laughs> this is the most in touch moment yeah, ever. Yeah, she goes, yeah, like you're using her as like an example of what you should, you know, that's, yeah. 
Looking so, they're really letting her emotions they, run the show. Getting the know. like cops coming in and being like, "Yeah, this woman's really in touch with her emotions." <laughs> He's like, "Hey, what's that?" <laughs> That's a good like the term for crazy. You go, "Hey, like I started dating this girl. I know you're friends with her. What do you think?" You go, "Let's just say she's in touch with her emotions." <laughs> yeah. <and> wink, wink, <laughs> wink. Say no more, fam. Say no more. <laughs> Let's just say this girl is pretty tapped into that emotional vein. I mean, obviously, there's some sort of in between that's ideal but yeah of course yeah. there's a, a balance might be fine but like again though to, that depends too right because they that th there's always like that all scenario like a lot of people try to do all the scenarios at once because the real part of you go does this benefit you or not it's like depends on what you're doing if you're trying to be like a professional athlete like probably being like crazy the that level of what you need or if you're like a trade like a you know, top of the line like hedge fund trader yeah the level that you have your emotions affect you you want that to be lower than if you Minimal. were yeah like if the you best were like athletes are like no emotions yeah to be honest like at what we do i actually probably am more tapped into stuff than i have to that i would like if you want to be like some sort of like an artist you need to sort of almost be like sensitive to like people's feelings and like audiences you yeah need to, for sure so to be honest you have to be like sort of tapped into that whole thing thing less than it actually benefits you it's actually that's why a lot of times like you know being a artist is like so bad for people because it like for like or jobs like that it forces you to be so fucking like uh like open up those sensors more than you yeah, like yeah, want to yeah. you know what i mean whereas like you yeah, know there is like a happiness and like being a guy that's like yeah i'm just not like tapped in like if people are like upset around me i can just ignore it you know what i mean mm -hmm. whereas like if you some of these jobs to be good at it you sort of have to not be able to ignore it you have to be like sort of tapped into it for sure yeah yeah i actually forgot it in, in uh, saratoga springs after my set this girl followed me into the green room because she didn't like one of my jokes <laughs> <laughs> That's that Literally. Old, you get that old Danny back. <laughs> I totally forgot about that until you were saying that. I forgot. Okay, let me just ask a quick question before you tell me what happened. Yeah. After she left, did you then uh, go into the closet and then go on your leather jacket and then put it back on? <laughs> the boys are backing down. It was like the A-team with the locker. And go. All of a sudden, <laughs> a, little <curl. laughs> a little curl comes down. <laughs> you light it so you start smoking again. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, it was good stuff. It was so crazy too. Like, I, like the, the the hey show had been over for ten. Danny, seconds. aren't you gonna be doing your meet and greet today? You go, nah, I'm not doing that anymore. And he goes, what? All the fans are there. Is there anything you want us to tell them? And you go, you can tell them to fuck off. <laughs> I go, you can you, tell them to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Cigarette right out on my tongue. <laughs> then you walk off and take off on your bike with a belt. <laughs> <laughs> Three-wheeler. <laughs> a girl followed you in. into the green room, Come right? on. Like, like immediately after. Like, and the show was like great. It was like a great show. And she was the the whole weirdest part was she was love. Her and her boyfriend were sitting up front, and they were like loving the whole show. And I was like, I was talking to them, and like it was great. And then the last joke, I said the word retard. And, That's what did it. And the very last joke, and I'm like, I'm saying all sorts of shit. Did you tell her that I can do that? Because <laughs> I am that. <laughs> and then the show, and then I literally get off stage, walk into the green room, and it was like really hot, so I was like sweating like crazy. I go sit down, and right when I sit down, she's there, and I go, oh hey. Okay. Like thinking she wanted to say like great show or something. No, she she walks in. She was like, and you go, all right, you can suck it, but make it quick. <laughs> all right, listen, you can suck it, but make it quick. I got a fucking nine o'clock coming through. <laughs> Oh, hello. I guess it's a show business, anyways. <laughs> oh, oh, hello. <laughs> I zip. No, she goes, she goes, my, um, she goes, that last joke you told? My brother has Down syndrome. She was crying? <laughs> Not crying, but she looked like she was about it. She goes, my brother has Down syndrome. I go, I didn't mention people with Down syndrome. And then what she said. She goes, well, so you know, that's. It's not cool to say that, and you might want to not do that joke ever again. And I go. That's that's the point when you flipped out your hair, your flip comb, <laughs> start combing your hair. <laughs> and I go, okay. Thanks. Then what happened? You stood there awkwardly. And then, oh, and then the you manager go, came in. And then you go, you have the sharpie in your hand, ready to sign the tits. <laughs> And you go, so we're so, signing them or not? <laughs> you more of an ass? Do you want me to make that to him? <laughs> What's his name? So we and then, said, the, we and then the puppies the, or not? And then the manager came in and fucking dragged her out. out. Yeah, because he's like, he's like, oh, sorry. He's like, I didn't realize. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's when you're in your bad boy mind too you yeah. go to the guy you go what the fuck that ever happens again I'll make sure this is comedy yeah. club shuts down by the end of the day I can make sure you never run a comedy business ever again motherfucker and I get that like na 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 with the glasses <laughs> <laughs> I 
forgot about that. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah. Well, a group of scientists uh, decided to get together and study balls and be- men between the ages of 21 and 55 of varying ethnicities and all their fathers of toddler aged kids were subjected to ball sizing and nurturing tendencies. And basically the whole gist of the study is dudes that have small balls are more nurturing to the kids because basically this is the whole premise. They're basically saying guys like me that have big ones. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck them kids. Yeah. They walk with the kids like, Hey dad. And you go just like, Hey dad, I have eight, eight and two. You go see what that is right there. That's a fucking <laughs> set kid. <laughs> yeah. Like, do, I, do I look like your fucking mother? Fend kid? for yourself. <laughs> hey, I get it. These might look like two titties to you. That's a fucking set. You know, you'll have one when you grow up. Probably not with this little. So then they're saying guys that have little measly. I can't fucking believe it. Why are you balls? Not your dick. Dude, honestly, I don't think anyone makes a big difference in between their balls. It's also small sample size. And then uh, also. I can't believe that someone's job. They said that the guys are less hands-on, the guys with big balls. <laughs> they aren't well, exactly jumping off the couch mid-football game to bathe or feed their kid. Do you think, so there's, they're, they're sort of making the premise that there's something to do with like the chemicals, whereas like, you, you know, like the whore, guys whatever. who have big balls have all this testosterone running through them kind of thing or something. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think what they're positing is they like the guys are so embarrassed about their small balls that the, the girl's <laughs> like, hey, do you want to make dinner? You're like, no, I should probably no, do I should, I should do uh, com- Like they're compensating for the small balls. Exactly. Like being great fathers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they're also being great mothers too. Like they're basically, you know what I mean? Taking care of the kid every which way because they're just like, you know, they look in the mirror every day and they go, you're a fucking ballless man. You're nothing. Get in that kitchen. Put your apron on, you little fucking woman. I can't believe that's someone's job. The doing job. this study? The study. The ball study. Do you, it could have potentially been like a, a psyop for like some fucking pervert to just feel a lot of balls. <laughs> Are you sure this is part of the this study? Is a study, you, study huh? um, you want the you know, five bucks or not? It's like, can you stop making noises when you uh, do the things? Like, hey, buddy, I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> buddy, hey, stop. Stop moving. I'm a professional. <laughs> Look, if you could just stop moving, we could get through this. But every time you move, I have to start again. <laughs> Do you really have to make the noises? Like, I, I went to medical school to not be told, like, some small ball motherfucker how to do my job, okay? These are, this, is the, <laughs> this is the kind of study where you, like, uh, you rip the thing off a phone pole. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're yeah, doing yeah, this yeah. study in the back of a friggin' Baskin Robbins, dude. <laughs> This study's this study's taking place in the, wheel, the wheelchair bathroom oh, yeah. in a coffee time. Shadow Coffee Time. Shadow Coffee Time. The study one, the <laughs> coffee time was the if people don't know. It's like the mo- it was the, the basically the Dunkin' Donuts, but it was like ninety no, percent of co- lower than Dunkin' Donuts. Oh no, no, I'm saying that's the lowest one they have here, but this was ten times lower. Yeah. And basically every bathroom was you couldn't go into the bathroom without like nine people doing heroin. Yeah, yeah. And then it got so bad that they started being twenty four hours, but they wouldn't let people come in because only people came in to do heroin. So they you basically it's like a imagine like a Dunkin' Donuts, but you have to go to a window to get your food, and you couldn't come in like a certain. <laughs> hours in the night and it's just like oh it was just like all it was like every criminal in fucking the world yeah they run there it was it was they were rough they and there were yeah regulars that essentially would sleep at dunkin donuts there'd be people like sleeping it was like the subway times fucking 20 and it was really just bad bad products uh, the study wanted to examine the evolutionary theory of animals that are made for breeding or nurturing. And basically, the, but this is the thing they're saying. So they're saying that I'm less nurturing. Yeah, you're just less nurturing. But well, also, you got those balls to deal with. It's balls, like you have your own babies. Yeah. Yeah. The girls never care. But the, having big balls is a blessing because all it does is make your dick look smaller. <laughs> That's a blessing? No, it's a curse. Oh, you said a blessing. No, if you haven't, like, basically, like... Yeah, obvi- yeah. yeah obviously, right? It's mm-hmm. just fucking... All it does is, like, you know, because the girls don't think, like, all oh, the balls are big. They think, like, all oh, the fucking dicks, like... Uh, is there... You know how there's, like, a breast reduction surgery? Is there a ball reduction surgery? Yes, and I didn't, and it didn't work. You but don't remember a, that? I thought that was not a reduction. I thought that was your things were all crossed. I did a reduction. Oh, I didn't know No, that. but you're right. It's not the actual balls. It's the stuff inside the balls. <laughs> Beside the stuff beside the balls, the yeah, surgery didn't reduce. take like like a like a face like a face uh, tuck or whatever like a facelift you know do this to your balls <laughs> cosmetic ball surgery 
there was actually back in the day a big thing that we used to do is uh, fucking all send each other pictures of balls, but like never a dick, just ball. Yeah. And then like funny thing would be like if someone's like it was like let's say it was like Waldo's birthday or whatever, right? Like we do the photo and then like the two other guys would take their balls out and put them beside their photo or whatever. <laughs> and then there was one like uh, I guess from old school Facebook before like uh, I, I think uh, I went and did like a, a run through of all the stuff, but there was an old photo that like uh, my buddy had basically like a job interview and he was like had to scrub it and he was like oh I got like he was like he basically had to take down all our tagged photos because he was at a job interview and he was like pretty crazy what was going on on Facebook back in the day and it was me Waldo and Jarek standing behind a wheelbarrow and we all had our balls in the wheelbarrow and at one point that was my profile picture <laughs> it was like that used to be the whole Facebook used to be the wild west yeah, if you put a ball photo now you'd be fucking you'd count take it yeah, down yeah done, done that, that was, was before a, the that days was a, of content moderation. back in the day that was a, you could be your profile photo of you having your ball on a wheelbarrow barrel <laughs> it's a different day a different time depending on what you're looking for in a guy you should probably become just as obsessed with ball size as every dude you've likely to have ever met so basically they're saying that uh you think that'll be a thing of like girls, think... girls but like girls on tinder no, like don't. don't waste my time and small balls only <laughs> Don't waste He's not my looking for guys to fucking dick around. No hookups, small balls only. I'm a ball. I'm a size queen. It's like, well, I'm packing eight inches. Around or circumference? What are we talking? I'm more of a just. I, I need to know the weight. Is there a way you can weigh your balls? Yeah, I'm about eight and a half. Yeah. Milligrams? What are we? What are we talking yeah, what are we about? Fucking, I'm trying to start a family. Okay? Stone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one thing we'll do that, and then we'll get the psychopaths and girls other article on the Patreon. Yeah, but yeah, people will be happy to know that this Sunday we are filming the Bugman versus Bugman competition. Go down! We've got all the gear. We have a, a location. We have a judge. So we it's all going every, down. We got everything. And then we're gonna have that edited quickly, so it's out be before the end of the month. So yep. it's a whole big thing that we're got going on here. So and then, and then uh, that's gonna be on the Patreon.com slash the boys cast. Oh well, let, we're we're gonna have the next one. Then we're gonna yeah. do another one, but we'll release this one first. Yes, of course. And then course. now we're in the swing of things. And then the next goal, we're gonna do the well, next. We're gonna challenge, do every two hundred new challenge. We won't announce it until yes. we've done this yeah, one. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. And well, oh, oh, we can do one p sneak preview. <laughs> yeah, is that uh, basically the person who loses the challenge has to return the thing in a hard hat with a dildo on it. <laughs> <laughs> To a Home Depot. <laughs> One of the things we keep up with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Patreon.com is the last of the boys, guys. Peace. Later.